Day five, and this is only getting more ridiculous. Investigators now trying to determine whether roof access had been properly locked down. The shooter climbing up seemingly unimpeded, about 400 feet from the stage, with a direct line of sight on the former president. Should that roof have been secure, period? That building in particular has a, a sloped roof uh, at its highest point. Um, and so, you know, there's a safety factor that would be con considered there that we wouldn't want to put somebody up on a sloped roof. Wouldn't want to put anyone on a sloped roof. Snipers behind Trump literally on a sloped roof. You know, that's a little bit old, that chart. That chart's a couple of months old. And if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. I think they hit him. Yeah, looks pretty slopey to me. Biggest, baddest, highest budget security agency on the planet. A slightly sloped roof. Putting your life on the line to take out terrorists and mad gunmen. A slightly sloped roof. Threat neutralised. Now let's get off this sloped roof before somebody gets hurt. Who is most responsible for this happening? The buck stops with me. I am the director of the Secret Service. Resign then. Not going to resign. Apparently she's been told by higher ups to shut up. The Secret Service director has been given instructions from the administration and the DHS secretary you want to keep your job, you'll keep your mouth shut about this. We now learn that the shooter was seen acting suspiciously and photographed by police nearly half an hour before the shooting. And that he wasn't just seen carrying and using a rangefinder three hours before the shooting, but that he entered the secure area carrying it after being subjected to a search and let go because he didn't have a gun. Just keep an eye on him, they said. Near the magnetometer area where they're screening people in, He's carrying in his hand a rangefinder. It's a device that looks like a small pair of binoculars, but it's used by shooters to measure the distance when they're setting up a long distance shot. Uh, because he didn't have a weapon, that would not have prevented him to go, to go through security, uh, but they did flag, what does he have this in his hand for? Um, at that point, they told people, keep an eye on this guy, but then he leaves the secure area, the staging area, and he doesn't turn up again for some time. Right, so he's carrying a magnification device that you put on the end of an AR-15. Just keep an eye on him, I'm sure it'll be alright. Keep an eye on this guy. He's literally using the rangefinder to do reconnaissance on the snipers. There is an eerie moment in here, Aaron, where he's mm. taking the rangefinder and he's looking through it at the counter sniper positions. And one of the counter sniper positions is looking at him through the scope. At this point, there's not a gun in the picture, as I understand it, but they're saying he's looking at us, looking at him. Yeah, just keep an eye on him. Probably nothing. According to former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino, someone was supposed to be on the roof securing it. Yes, even though it was slightly sloped, but that they just didn't bother to show up. So I was just showing Tucker some material from a, 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 an unimpeachable source, let's just say, on the matter. That post, according to my source, that roof was supposed to be a police post. It, it was supposed to be someone there. They're now making up excuses, saying the pitch of the roof. Uh, my source says to me, they, no one knows why the post didn't show up. But so that's a nonsense story they're putting out in the media. Maybe the guy was too busy trying to open a fence. <laughs> living in a new age of banana republic insanity. We have a secret service that takes down the shooter only after he shoots at Trump, an FBI that fabricates cases, an ATF that wants to take away your guns, a justice system that wants to lock up its political opposition, and an FDA that favours big pharmaceutical companies over your health. Quite clearly, government agencies are being weaponized against the American people. In times like these, we need to stick together and stay strong and healthy enough to protect our families. And just like they're trying to take down Trump, they're trying to take down Black Forest Supplements star product, NMN. And it's not because of its safety or efficacy, it's because they're greedy. 
greedy and corrupt. Now they're trying to turn NMN into the world's first anti-aging prescription drug. Simply to fill their never-ending pockets. Why do they want to do this? Because NMN works. NMN is vital for the functioning of the 37 trillion cells in your body. A study by Harvard claims that it can help reduce weight, cholesterol and even blood pressure in overweight adults. I've been taking NMN for the best part of a year now and it's a total game changer. More focus, better energy, better weight management. So I've asked Black Forest to give my viewers a special discount because I want to give you guys a chance to get your hands on NMN before any potential restrictions come into play. For the next 48 hours you can buy two, get two free. Now that's a juicy deal. Black Forest Supplements is ready to fight for this. They want to ensure that people can continue to have access to NMN. But who knows, there might come a day when the agents are at Black Forest's door, trying to stop them from selling this life-changing supplement. So I urge you to check out the link down below and grab some for yourself. And take advantage of the buy two, get two free offer while it lasts. Security around Trump was supposed to have been ramped up before last weekend, after details of a separate assassination plot were uncovered. Yet they still went with the Pac-Man perimeter. Was every element, every part of his, from the intelligence to the counter-assault team, to the detail agents, the shift agents, I mean every element top to bottom of the advance in the operation was every element increased after you learned of this credible threat. What we increased was what we felt was appropriate for the former president and for that particular event on that day. We have been increasing the assets and the resources and the staffing that we have been providing to the former president uh, since he was a presidential candidate and then the presumptive nominee. Every element of security was increased, apart from overcoming that all-conquering, slightly sloping roof and letting a dodgy guy with a rangefinder walk around for three hours before climbing up it. Congressman and former US Army sniper Corey Mills probably won't get invited on CNN again. I've done thousands of advances. I've done thousands of, of counter sniper operations with our teams in or, you know, Iraq and mm -hmm. Afghanistan, etc. The amount of negligence, the amount of mistakes that was made here, I have a very difficult time not leaning myself towards this was intentional as opposed to fecklessness. Let's just say that it was like, okay, first we want to censor and silence you, then we want to indict and imprison you. Now we're attempting to kill you and take whoa, you whoa, off whoa, the stage. Whoa, 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 You, uh, uh, let's, let's slow down. Yeah, that's one and done. As to Thomas Crux's intentions, we now learn he had a remote detonator on his person, which was connected to an IED in his car and another in his home. Was he planning to set it off as a distraction? Or did he intend to survive after assassinating Trump and go on another rampage against his supporters. And why would he want to blow up his own house where his parents lived? He had a bulletproof tactical vest in his car, but strangely chose not to wear it. All this preparation, and yet strangely, still no motive. No social media footprint, nothing on his phone, no firm political beliefs, no manifesto. They interviewed a hundred people who knew him. Nothing. If he was just some bullied loner incel who wanted to make himself famous and go out with a bang, you'd at least expect some self-pitying screed blaming his classmates, his parents, society or whatever. This incredible video by Point Consciousness went viral showing how Trump survived by literal millimetres. Take a look what happened. Oh. Take a look what happened. Oh. If he hadn't slightly turned his head to look at that illegal immigration chart, he'd be dead right now. Wait, being racist saved Trump's life. Former SWAT sniper Major Nate Norton said the shot would have been a piece of cake for anyone half competent. Some say it was divine intervention. Maybe a combination of that and the fact that Thomas Crooks was such a loser he couldn't shoot fish in a barrel. Meanwhile, shitlibs are still outraged about the size of Donald Trump's bandage. Trump was going out with his uh, outsized pudsy bear style uh, uh, dressing. Oh, he's taken a hypersonic bullet to the ear. I think he's allowed yeah. to put a bandage on. Trump's ear bandage was so unnecessary. <laughs> If you value what I do and you want to help support me, please visit pauljosephwatson.locals.com and either pledge a one-time donation or subscribe to join my community, get early access videos and message me directly. And exclusive live streams coming soon too. Promise. Check out the Locals link down in the description. And don't forget to take a look at the brand new website, modernity.news. That's where you'll find all my content, including exclusive articles. That's modernity.news.